Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Chats with the Farmer's Daughter Fibers. I am Candace, the Farmer's Daughter. I just started this and wasn't recording. I made it about three minutes and then realized I wasn't recording. So yeah, off to a great start. Um, I'm really excited to be here today. Oh no, I have the worst allergies, you guys. And I have a little fiber up my nose. It's not a booger. Um, I think I did this last time. I, my allergies have been so bad and I'm allergic to any over-the-counter medicine. And so it's really difficult to get, um, it under control, but I did get a prescription that I'm going to pick up today. So, um, the other day I sneezed no less than 200 times and I'm not even exaggerating. I just have like crazy allergies. And you know what actually I think it's from is that when I was dying in my basement, I, obviously didn't have great ventilation. I, why did I tell you guys this already? How do you guys want to hear about my allergy woes? Anyways, I got allergies, increased allergies from, uh, being in my basement without ventilation and hand scanning and doing this and all the little fibery bits going off into my nose all the time. I wore a mask when I was dying, but, um, it doesn't really count when there's, um, fiber and flying in the air, clogging up your pores. Maybe not pores, I don't know what's in your nose. Okay, anyways, <laughs> already off to the rambling. Um, last weekend we had the pub crawl and that was super, super fun. Uh, was such a great group of people. Everyone is like so positive and happy and I just, I love when that happens. So that was very nice. And we went to the Kellergeist, which is this amazing little German pub here. And they're in a different location right now than their original location that they're uh, revamping. And so, but they have the best cocktails and um, Mott's and Jolene are the owners and Mott's, um, is from Germany and he makes all of these amazing bratwurst. And so we had bratwurst and they have crepes on the weekend. Their brunch is great. So I think I've talked about the Keller guys before because we did stuff with them for um, the mimosa challenge. I feel like I'm just repeating myself this morning. I hate that. Um, anyways, we made it to, we had like all these different places planned out and we made it to the Keller guys. I stayed, think we stayed there for like three hours. Um, I left early to come back to the shop, but I'm going to sneeze. Um, and then the last place I think that they went to was the wild hair. So it was a good time. Everyone was just like knitting and having fun. And we didn't even get that many people were like, what are you guys doing? Like so confused about the knitters, which Honestly, I get so annoyed of um, because it's like we're a different species somehow or it's, I don't know. I don't understand like why. I think what maybe annoys me is it, and this is a coming from like older men who are like just associate it with their moms or their grandmas doing it. And a lot of times it's very heartfelt and I don't mind that, but um, just people being so confused about knitters and there's more knitters than there are golfers. That's what I say to like put it in perspective for them. So, um, anyways, um, let's move on to a positive note, not people, you know, being weird about us knitting. Um, I went on a bison hunt this week. It was an absolutely amazing experience. Um, Great Falls, um, public school, Indigenous Education Department. Um, they take the kids on a couple bison hunts throughout the year. And it is a bison range that is in Shoto. Um, outside of Shoto, it is just such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful part of Montana. It's a very untouched part of Montana and it doesn't have like a lot of tourists or like things going on. And if you ever get a chance, go hiking or camping or anything that you can up there because it's just, it's gorgeous. It's really, really fun. And um, yeah, so we went and we did that. My son came with me, which was awesome. Um, I'm so glad that he was able to experience that with me. 
and also he drove me up there and drove me back so I was able to knit the entire time which is like I've unlocked this new part of my life which is so great um what else about the hunt we did a ceremony before um which was just really special to be a part of um and the ceremony includes um smoking a pipe and praying and giving thanks to the bison for um you know giving its life for us and just a lot of other traditional things and so that was really cool that was maybe my favorite part um, I hope that I can go again because I think there are things that I would do differently. Like when you're in the middle of it and it's so powerful and like all this stuff is happening, like you're kind of nervous. And I think that it would be um, like next time I'll be, I feel like I'll, I'll know what's going on. I'll know what's happening and I'll be able to um, maybe just not enjoy it more because it's not that I didn't enjoy it, but more just like take it in in a different way um yeah so it was so cool and so we went out to this field where the bison are and then some of us stayed back and then the kids all jumped on a flatbed trailer and some of the adults too but it was really crowded and I just wanted to make sure all the kids had room so I didn't go out there when they actually shot the buffalo or the bison um and so they went out there and they shot the bison and then we all got to go out there um, and kind of see it and the bison were close um, because there was, you know, the truck out there that they don't get, they're wild, you know, they do not get fed hay and stuff like that, but they do come around when the trucks are around. And so they were pretty close, which is really cool to be that close to them um, in a safe way. This isn't Yellowstone. Um, and like Yellowstone National Park, you know, because people are always getting attacked by bison, not Yellowstone the show. Um, yeah, and we went out there and we got to give offerings and pray. And then um, I got to take like the roving straight off of the bison, which was amazing. I'm going to use it for a special project. I'm not really 100% sure yet. You know, I have about like this much and what my idea is, and I know I'll, I will use it. I, I think I can use it actually for both of these things, but I want to make a like little medicine pouch with it and felt, um, you use the, use the roving to felt. Um, and I think I might felt like a little bison and then bead around it and then put it on like a leather medicine pouch is my idea. We'll see what, what actually happens with that, if that works. Um, and then after we did that, they took it and they have like these, um, basically these like hooks lift and they put the bison on the back of the flatbed and then they brought it down to a creek bottom where then we harvested it so they gutted it um we ate the kidney um lots of lessons during all of this um and then it was awesome it was so fun it was so fun to be there with the kids too and then we had lunch and we left um but they'll take the bison back and get it um, processed. And then that meat and all of it, like the tongue, they'll have a ton of tacos at the school. Like they use a, most of it, the hide, the skull, everything. And so they will use that for, um, for feeding the kids. They'll make meals at school. And then during like holiday breaks or summer, stuff like that, they send kids home with the bison too. So um, just really amazing experience. It was so thankful to be a part of it and I'm thankful that I get to share that with you. So, um, and I'll share when I do my medicine pouch or, um, whatever I'm going to do the, oh, I was going to say the other thing I want to do is maybe put some in a weaving. So, um, we'll just see how much I have left. And I like, don't want to like, I don't want to clean it. Like I want to leave all the debris and stuff in there. So we'll see what happens. Like if I'm able to put it in a weaving, even just like a little tiny baby, like make some little baby weavings or something like that would be fun. So we'll see. We'll see what inspiration comes. Um, what else? Sorry, just had a brain fart there. 
um, my mind was turning about the bison roving. Um, that's kind of all that's going on with me this week. I've been working. Sarah started full time this week, so I've had like a little bit of my life back, which feels really good. Um, you know, obviously I love the shop and I love being here, but when I have to be here nine to five and like do shop work all the time, I don't get my other stuff done. And I can maintain that for like maybe two, three weeks tops. And then I start getting too stressed out and losing it. So um, I'm really thankful that she's here full time. It's nice. And then I'm going to St. Mary's this weekend, right next to Glacier National Park. Um, my sister adopted a baby gosh, two years ago, two and a half years ago. Um, it was crazy because she like, my sister's been telling me, this is my older sister, Veronica. She's been telling me for years, like, oh, I want to adopt a baby. I want to adopt a baby. And I mean like 20 years, like even when she had little kids and I was always just like, you're crazy. No, I'd like roll my eyes at her and be like, you do not need to adopt a baby. And then two and a half years ago, um, she in 2020, wasn't it 2020? Yeah, it would have been January of 2020. She called me and she was like, her and her husband had put in their paperwork. Um, and this is on the res, um, put in their paperwork and were like, you know, to foster. And the next day I got a phone call. Like we have a little baby, um, here. She's a month old. She got left at the hospital. And do you guys want to come and get her? And my sister called me and I was like, you have to go get her. Like, I just knew that she was ours. And then I called my sister's husband and was like, you got to go get this baby. I just know it. I just know it. Um, but it's been two years of the adoption process. And honestly, res politics are awful, um, really awful. And so she finally, two weeks ago, got adopted on May 31st. Um, it was official. So this weekend we're having a big celebration, a big gotcha day celebration. And it's in my favorite place in the entire world. My sister has a campground in St. Mary's. Um, it's called Divide Creek. If you go to Glacier, stay there. If you wanna camp and have like a real, like um, untouched experience. Um, if you need like a lot of amenities, it's probably not the best place. There's a shower house and there's water, um, but there's no like hookups or anything like that. But it is absolutely beautiful. It's such a special place. Um, so I'm so excited to go up there this weekend. And I, it might be one of the only weekends that I get to go up there this summer, which most of the time I'm up there like all summer, um, but we just, we have stuff going on this summer, so. Um, so I'm really excited and see all my family and relatives. So it's going to be really nice. And I'll tell you guys about it. And I'll post pictures on my Instagram stories too. And I'm excited to share pictures of Willow is my niece um, because I haven't been able to do that, you know, just out of privacy and like, um, you know, just worrying about things. So I'm excited to, I'll share with you guys her. She's so cute and a little sassy thing. Um, okay, moving on to share time. I am wearing um, Caitlin Hunter's Reluctant Homeschooler um, cardigan. And this was, um, Caitlin designed this in, um, during COVID. Um, when she was homeschooling her kids and you know, she has three boys and I think they're pretty wild. So, um, so it is like, you know, oh, let's see if I can step on this so you guys can see the, the length of it. <laughs> that just looks crazy. Um, yeah, it goes to like my hips. It doesn't cover my butt, just like the top of it. I wear the shit out of this thing. I seriously, I actually need to um, depill it because it's getting a little pilly underneath the arms. Not too bad, but um, you know, it's yarn. It's gonna fluff away. Um, I, yeah, I just, I absolutely love this cardigan. This is a colorway fugitive and it's in squish bulky, um, which is a really quick, lovely knit. I don't think it takes very long. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm wearing. 
Um, what I'm knitting, I brought all of my knitting today to show you guys. Some of it you've seen before. I mean, this is like the fourth episode and you've seen this stupid hat every time, but this is the last time because I finished it on my way to the bison hunt. And it's fun because it's my bison are the Great Falls High is their mascot is the bison. And yeah, so I finished it. Um, I just need to, you know, I didn't have a darning needle. I didn't have scissors. I didn't have shit when I was uh, going up there. So I just, luckily I found a bunch of um, safety pins because I started another hat right away. Um, yeah, and this is the um, basic rib hat from Pearl Soho. And I just, I started another one um, cause it's, I realized I really like having these on my needles. One, this hat is one that I wear like all the time. Um, and I can just sit and knit and I could actually probably knit while I'm doing my freaking podcast. Um, this yarn right here, I'll give you guys a little sneak peek. This is going to be like, it's going to be a true worsted weight for us. Um, heavy worsted. Um, and that will be out, I think like in August or September, we're going to release that. So I'm just trying it out and I love it so far. It's very bouncy. Um, and it's actually, should I just tell you guys, it is, um, basically recollect worsted. So very excited about that. Um, it is a three ply. Oh, wait, is it a three ply? So the four ply, I'm pretty sure it's three, but I don't want to say that and be wrong. Yeah, it's a three ply. It was like, wait, um, it's a three ply and recollects a two ply. So just a little bit of extra girth on her. And it will be, um, we'll be using the gray, um, yarn or, uh, wool with it that's what recollect is it's gray and white and so this is gray and white too a little bit less gray but um i think it's like 10 15 percent gray and recollects like 20 25 percent so very excited about that um so that's kind of one of my projects that i'm working on I like having that around and I started, um, I'm almost to the, like I have two, three more rows before I'm at the sleeves for my cowgirl crop. Let me see if I can get this. Oh, you know what I just realized is the last couple times I've been doing the podcast, it's been on like that portrait mode and I don't think it's on the portrait mode this time, which actually, I mean... I might not look as beautiful without portrait mode, but it's easier to show you guys things because I'm not trying to like zoom in. Um, you know, obviously this guy is gonna get a really good blocking, but stay on there. Here, get this out of the way. You can see the little cowboy boots. And the hats. This pattern um, is by at Knitting Ruined My Life on Instagram. Um, it's Mar Marl 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 Marl. Sorry, sorry Marl. Um, I hope I'm saying that right. But I think this is releasing like real soon, and I gotta get my poop in a group with it. I'm, I'm not a very good um, tester because I never finish on time. And most of the time I warn people and I don't think I warned her about that. And well, I really did think I was gonna get it done. And then, and I didn't. You know, I got, I got, um, I got a little, not a brain fart, but just the cowboy boots. I don't know why. I was just like dragging my feet on getting the cowboy boots done. It was so fun and easy chart. I mean, I finished it in like the that chart in like an hour. I don't know why it was, you know, it's all up here. So it's gonna be a little cropped. I'm gonna make it pretty cropped and I'm gonna do short sleeves and it's gonna go right in the window. So I'm really excited because it's gonna match really well with all of our 
Um, we have all these pom-poms in the window, and then we have our chandeliers, our pom-pom chandeliers, which I am gonna do a tutorial about the pom-pom chandeliers. I'm gonna do that next week, and that's probably why I won't do a podcast next week, so I can film for the pom-pom chandeliers. Um, so there'll be something coming out next week. And then this is my, um, this is my nurtured that I have knit two sleeves and the yarn is La Bienna May. Um, it's her confetti Cordale. Let me see if I have a, I don't kinds of crap in here. Mm, Mentos. Um, I don't have a, this is it though right here. Um, I don't have the label. I love this yarn. I got a sweater, sweater quantity of it. Oh, good chapstick. I need some of that. Um, I got a sweater quantity of it, but I wore my nurtured actually on that bison hunt, the one that I knit in Craigie Tweed. And I was like, oh, the sleeves are tight on this. Like it will be fine, but it's not going to be fine. Um, it's too much too tight so I'm just gonna take it out you know I don't I don't want to fight it also my sleeves aren't even the same length yeah weirdo look at that cripes Candace <laughs> oh my gosh they're like that's like half an inch shorter on the cuff um yeah I just think that um I just don't want to I just don't want to do something that isn't going to work, you know? So I am going to take it out and put the yarn in my stash and then just see what happens. Um, I got to think about what a nice sweater. I mean, I like the texture for this yarn because you have all of these like, and if you don't know, this yarn is, I think... From what I know, all of these little bits are recycled um, bits from Amy's yarn in La Bienna May. So don't you think this would just be like, I just thought, I mean, I do, I love it with all this texture, but it's not working. And you know what? I had, um, I mean, I'm sure I could get it to work, right? I could go up a needle size. Like there's, there's plenty of things I could do, but I had a customer who had watched the podcast and she said she was trying to make a nurtured with this too and she couldn't get it either. So she was gonna do Craigie Tweed. So, gosh, I don't know. I'm just gonna have to look for a sweater in this. I do want something textured, not cables though. So I don't know, we'll see. Maybe just a plain sweater too. Maybe a blanket, maybe a baby blanket would be cute. Although I don't know if it's super wash. So, anyways, that's kind of what I'm knitting. Um, oh, more chapstick. I'm going to leave this one out. I'm going to put this guy in there with all my stuff. I can put it so I have a darning needle. Um, I haven't seen this bag for a long time, so I'm kind of like, hmm, what's in there? Eye drops, peppermint, rose water, the use. Okay, that's what I'm knitting. So, I'm going to finish my... Um, I'm going to finish my crop. I'm going to take out my yarn that's in that. I'm still working on my temperature blanket. Oh, guys, I'm behind bad. I really need to get started on it. And that was another thing is I should have went up a needle size on that. And it kind of hurts my hands a little bit. And that's a little bit what's stopping me. But after I get the cowgirl crop, I'm going to focus on my temperature blanket and also are um, Steak Along, which I'll go over all of that towards the end of the podcast, but I'm really excited to do that Steak Along. So um, I'm just looking at my notes here, um, what I'm knitting. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys some other things that we have here in the shop. And I had an idea of showing you just like some makers things that I love um, and that we carry here in the shop. And then also I wanted to show you this super cute spiral. Um, let me see here. I want to grab the pattern so I 
Spiraling Cables Triangle. It's a Stephen West. Um, I'll take it off in 50. Oh, and I forgot last time to actually, I taught, you know, I said that this was Vicky, but I thought Vicky could join me for every podcast. And I got Vicky in Portland. She's an old Victoria's Secret model. Um, and I got her in like the um, like the industrial district in Portland, which is one of my favorite parts of Portland. And I rescued her there. And that was in 2017, I think, to probably 2017 at the Gorge Fiber Festival. Um, and I was on my way there. And Vicky has come with me to every single show that I have been to where I've brought my own um, stuff, like not trunk shows and stuff like that, but even some, she's been to trunk shows. And now she lives here, she's really happy, and she's been in the window lately, so in the spotlight. That's probably where she'll live from now on. And she likes her weaving water and weed shirt. You can take, Vic you can take Vicky out of Victoria's Secret, but you can't take the Victoria's Secret out of Vicky. Um, okay, anyways, this is, I'm trying to find where you start here. This is the Spiraling Cables Triangle. That's a mouthful. Um, and Sarah, this is Sarah Shaw, and she let us borrow it. She's been letting us borrow it. Um, she knit it out of Juicy DK and Spin Cycle, and I absolutely fell in love with it. First, this is Midsummer, and I love this color. She used Midsummer in a case of you, and you can't really tell, but. Um, a case of you is a speckled yarn. I'll be able to show you guys like a little bit closer. Um, let's see here. Let's find a speckly part. It's just really light. You can kind of barely see those speckles in there. And you start here at the bottom and um, it's garter. A lot of it is garter. And then what I love about it is that the spin cycle is really like the main color, right? And maybe it depends, you know, if if we used a darker color for the um, where the Juicy DK is, then that would, you know, maybe pop out more and then the spin cycle would be kind of the background. But I really love that the spin cycle like shines so much and you just, you really get to see all of the beautiful colors of it oh my gosh isn't that just like the most beautiful thing i'm not a i'm not a shawl knitter um so i'm like always in awe and there are two by two cables just going up like this it goes really really quick um Alyssa is also knitting one and she is like whipping through she might even be well, I don't know how much she knit on vacation because she just went on vacation, but she might be getting close. She was getting to these lattices. And again, just like a two by two um, lattice cable. And Steven used, I, I believe, I'll pull the pattern now. I believe he used two different colors of spin cycle where we just used one. Yeah, he used he used two different colors of spin cycle. He used shades of earth, rusted rainbow, and nostalgia. Okay, he used three. And then the main color where we just used one because I think it's cool to show how like one color transitions throughout. You can really like see that. But you can do whatever your little heart pleases. And the juicy DK in this just makes it so soft and luxurious. So we made kits and here is, here is the sample. This is Midsummer in a case of you. Really pretty. And then this one is my personal favorite and you have to like envision it knit up, right? Because it's going to like, again, the spin cycle is really going to pop through because it has all of these garter ridges. And so this is, I think this is in a jam, but let me just let me double check. 
even though my own color is right. It's in a jam. Um, in a jam and then rosy maple. And I picked out the best colors of rosy maple for these kits. And rosy maple is, I mean, it's just, it is my dream spin cycle color. Bright and fuchsia and just like, you can tell that I'm like really in this um, bright, you know, mood, summer mood. So this is kit number two. The first one I showed you is kit number one. This is kit number three, which I also love. I wanted to, all of these are pretty bright, but I wanted to offer like a, you know, more of our typical earth tone. And this is Bare Gulch and Deep Bump. And again, I just wanted to put like kind of unconventional colors together um, to really make that spin cycle pop. I think this one would be so cool. I can't wait to see this one knit up. So this is kit number three. And then for all of you blue fans out there, this is Come and Get Your Love and Lapis. Oh, that's going to look so good too. So, love that. All right, Vicky, let's put this back on you, my girl. I can't believe we haven't had any phone calls. Oh, I should knock on wood. I don't know if that's real wood. We haven't had any phone calls, no riffraff outside today, and no ghosties either. Everyone's on their best behavior. I slept on my arm on last night and it's really bugging me now. I think I'm getting tendonitis. I got a massage yesterday and that made it feel better, but not if I'm sleeping wrong on it. Okay, um, I wanna show you guys some makers things that I love. And these are all things to help you with your making in a sense of like planning or patterns, um, that type of stuff. So the first one is, this, where am I on time? Half an hour, I'm golden. I love this chapstick. We got new chapstick. If anybody did our advent last year, there was a chapstick, this coconut chapstick that I've been obsessed with. And so we got new chapstick. So I think the hurrah, you know, it might not totally go away, but I might start giving some of the hurrah out in packages. Oh, maybe I could give them out if you get a, um, if you get a dream star, uh, blah, 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 blah. spiraling cables triangle. I don't know why that's so hard for me to say. Spiraling cables triangle kit. I will throw in a hurrah, lip balm. There we go. Um, because I'm bringing in a new chapstick. Okay, maker's boards. ADD Candace. Um, I love Coco Knits is my knitting, um, lord and savior. I love everything that they do. Their products are so well made. They um, are eco-friendly. Um, the owner is amazing. One of the sweetest people that I've met in the industry, Julie. She is just so lovely. And again, like I just, I love the quality of everything that they do. I love the colors. Um, a lot of the colors are like neutrals they have this kind of new neutral palette that they've been coming out with too which is like totally my jam but then they also have colored you know brightly colored ones so it's easy like these stitch markers are easy if you're you know needing to be really organized with your knitting and know which color stitch marker you know represents something else um i use everything cocoa knits and i'm looking over here because that's where we like keep all of our cocoa knit stuff and maybe sometime if you guys are interested i'll go through and talk about all the different things that they have to offer but one thing that they came out with gosh maybe last fall is this maker's board which i'm obsessed with and um i don't i print my patterns i don't really use knit companion or like pdfs and stuff like that um i will if i have to but for the most part i just i love a printed pattern there's something about it um also i'm dyslexic 
And so having it printed out helps me better than looking at a screen. And I need like, I like to cross things out and write on it like physically. Um, and I know you can do all that stuff with Knit Companion, but there's just something about having it physical, right? Um, so the Coco Knits Maker's Board comes with, <laughs> this magnetic's really strong. Um, it's gonna stay up. Um, you know, you can fold it up like this, which is really nice, because then I'll just take it with me and I just fold my pattern over. Um, but then you can kind of do this. And I put these guys down here. I put a couple down here and it comes with the board. It comes in this really nice like little duster cover like this. And there's this one and then there's a, a, a green one. Oh, I did bring the green one out, a sage colored one. Or no, it's gray. It's Mr. Pocket colored. No, it's gray. <laughs> it's not green. I'm thinking of the, like their little totes that they have, which I also love. Um, yeah, so it's also that color. And then this is sold separately, the ruler and this gauge um, magnet, which I don't use the gauge magnet, but I use it to hold down my patterns. And I also, when I'm doing like color work, so for my cowgirl crop, I would just use it to like follow along on my chart. Um, when I knit, I knit the halibut cowl by Caitlin Hunter and that chart is a beast. There is not one row that is the same. And I'm someone who, when I'm doing charts, I'm like three, two, one, two, three, two, one, two, like the repeat or whatever. And that has like no repeat, beautiful pattern, well worth it. But this was a lifesaver when I was doing that. And then you can also get, so I do, you know, I do recommend these because it's nice to have that along, unless you have a magnetic like ruler or something like that already. Um, and then you can also get, add on these really cute cocoa knits. Oh shit, I just forgot something. I'm gonna have to run back because um, I forgot the prize. Oh, it's upstairs. Dang nabbit. I could take you guys with me. <laughs> um, sorry, I just remembered that. Um, so these little colorful magnets are nice to have with it. I have it with mine, but I don't think it's, you know, it's not a huge necessity because you have these guys. But if I'm knitting outside and it's windy, actually I've been using these a lot to like hold down the pattern. Um, so coconuts makers board, love this guy. And another little makers, I don't even know what you call this. What do you call this? Let's look it up. Da -da -da. I don't want to screw this up. It's by Thread and Maple. Notions Clutch. I'm gonna grab one thing, so I'm gonna show you guys how this thing fits in there. <laughs> I need to order more of these. I need to order more. I need to order more for healing bundles too. Things I think about in the middle of the night. Um. Okay, the no the thread and maples notions clutch. You know, if I edited things, this is where I would do that. I'd be like, Meh. but we're not gonna do that. It's real life here. We don't have time. So the notions clutch by Thread and Maple is this beautiful leather. Um, here's one in black. This is wine colored. Um, this is a company out of Canada. This wine one, that smells so good. Is beautiful i i just don't even think that you're getting like it's more it's more whiny than it even shows right here this one's whiskey which i love this one and i love how the leather like wears on these too really nice um this whiskey one the leathers feel softer 
And then the chocolate one feels a little bit hardier. So maybe I'll show you on the whiskey because it might be easier to see. Um, so it snaps in the front here. Come on, buddy. Like that. <laughs> and then you unsnap it. Um, and then in the back here, you have the zipper so you could keep your stitch markers or pens, pencils right here. And then when you open it up, you have so many things. You have a wooden tape measure right there. Let's see if I can pop it out. Oh, yeah. It's one of those kind of nice stiff ones. That's what she said. Um. <laughs> This is really hard to do. I'm like trying to show you guys. It's not this difficult. Um, scissors right here. And then down here is little darning needles. And then in here is just more. This would be where maybe you could do some of your bigger stitch markers. Um, and then it comes with this really nice little leather buff, so you can buff out all your scratches or whatever. This works good on the black, I've noticed. Let's see what it says. Your clutch is handcrafted of soft, soft, genuine leather. It will age like fine wine. Use the wool felt pad to buff out any scruffs or scratches. Cleaning is best done with a soft damp cloth minimal pressure so maybe if you oh no it is it's buffing it out oh pretty oh wow it really does just shine that up i mean the some of the scratches right are like inevitable but i just scratched it with my nail a little bit oh but it really does i mean you can't tell the difference because i didn't show you but i can tell the difference here and then you can put your pens right here, other little things. And then we have these great notebooks, um, Flora and Fauna notebooks. They're three bucks, super, super cheap. I'm gonna order more of them. Um, we do have some in stock. And then you can just slide this in here and keep your little notebook in there. Um, I really love this for traveling because you have all of your things. I could have used it on my way to the bison hunt. Um, I also feel like this is really great for designers too, um, cause you can keep your notebook in there and then you have all of your bits and bobs. So really beautiful. Um, again, bread and maple notions clutch. Another, another nice little maker. You know, it's, it's nice when we're makers to have like all these special things to make our craft just feel better. Not like yarn doesn't make us feel good enough but there's something so like therapeutic about it and um i guess therapeutic but also the word i'm really looking for is like ritualistic you know you have these little rituals where you have your um you know your maker's board and you're popping it up or your notions clutch like those type of things make such a big difference for me in my making and just like having a hot cup of tea like the whole thing um, I know you guys can relate to that, so I love it. Um, and then the next thing I wanted to show you was these notebooks that we have, and they are a German notebook. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm not gonna try, <laughs> sorry. Um, this one right here is like, we have dotted ones, and then this one has lines in it, and they come in all different colors. Um, really, I love these. I use mine for, with different sizes. Um, we also have the pens and the pens are great because they're, you know, a little bit more on the price point, um, but they have refills so you can refill them. I mean, I think the pens are like 20 bucks. So really in the game of pens, not that big. 
um, are not that expensive. And then they also, we have pen loops that go in them, um, lots of different accessories for these guys. So really great notebook if you're looking for another maker's thing, accessory, tool. Um, okay, maker's must haves are done. I need to get my water. I'm so bummed that I left those bags upstairs for the giveaway. I have to show you. And there's two of them. I double checked my list too to make sure I had everything. But I did it. Okay, moving on. I want to show you, oops, this guy got left out. There are also the um, Notions Clutch comes with some stitch markers. I want to just show you guys, a, you know, everyone I think enjoyed seeing Mr. Pocket last time. And I will, I can do a little bit more of that where I show you like one color on different bases, especially if it's a color that varies like that but I get a lot of questions about our neutrals and what like a good cream or neutral is. So we have three different ones. We also have, um, and some of our bases will just sell the natural yarn undyed. That's just plain white, like kind of a stark white. Um, an example, I mean, obviously, uh, case of you is dyed, but it would be like that, just white, white dark white um but we have three other ones and there is horse belly noppy and many moons and we get a lot of questions of what the differences of those are and so i thought i would show them to you i have them in foxy lady and on sue copy so a super wash and a non-super wash um and i'll just start with noppy noppy was one of our first colorways that we made and noppy and actually horse belly were both um some of our first colorways Nappy is the black feet. Um, I don't want to say, well, he's the trick. He's a trickster. Um, there's lots of Nappy stories and really a lot of the stories are like for morale, like, um, or not morale, morals, um, teaching you lessons. And so when I was doing Nappy, one of my favorite stories is about Nappy and the magpies and the aspen trees and how the aspen trees got um, their eyes on them, their knots. And not be in the magpies, oh, it's a long story. I don't have time. I'm sorry to tell you about not be in the magpies, but I'll do it maybe in a video. I've done it before, actually. Um, I might even have a saved story. The magpies were, maybe I'll just try. I'll, I'll try and tell you guys. The magpies were throwing their, they were playing in the woods and they were throwing their eyes on the, um, taking their eyes out and throwing them on the trees, on the aspen trees. And Noppy came along and he was like, what are you guys doing? And they're like, oh, we're just playing Noppy. Like, you know, and he was like, well, can I do it? And they're like, yeah, you can, but you can only throw one of your eyes. You can't throw both of them. And so he was like, okay, okay, I won't. I promise I won't. So he's out there and he's throwing his eyes on the, throwing his eye on the um, aspen tree. And pretty soon he's really having fun, really loving doing it. And then he started having too much fun and he started throwing both of his eyes out on the aspen tree. And before you know it, they stuck on there. So if you see aspen trees, the knots, the eyes, that's not be watching you. And I love that story. It's my favorite not be story. I love aspen trees. And so this was like the color that I wanted to represent the, the bark of the aspen. Um, so that's where not be came from. And this is not be on Foxy. And we're gonna let that go because we're not open yet. And this is not be on Sukapi. And you can see that they are a really nice cream and they just have a little bit of a um, yellow undertone to them. And then horse belly, and horse belly reminds me of when I dyed this, 
Um, I wanted like a really, again, a nice cream, but it reminds me of underneath a horse. And I had a horse that, flax, um, that was brown, but underneath it had a white belly like this, a creamy white belly. And it almost has like a pink undertone to it. But you know how horse bellies, or maybe you don't know, but horse bellies are really, really soft. And this is on Foxy, but you can really kind of start seeing that a little bit of a more of a pink undertone on Sue Copy. You know, there's a pretty big difference, color difference there. And so I'll compare Horse Belly and Nappy together. And you can see the yellow in this. And this looks more cream, but you kind of take it away and you can, you know, almost pick up that brick color back there of the, the pink. And then Noppy and Horse Belly. I'll switch them because this was Horse Belly and then this one's Noppy. And on Sue Copy, you can almost see a little bit more tan on the Noppy. And then this is a new color of ours, Many Moons. I really wanted a cream that was more neutral than those you know it was like really a true natural cream and so this is that on foxy lady right here and then on many moons right here and i just think honestly um this cardigan in many moons and like i just imagine like a really nice cushy like creamy sweater in this maybe at a pishkin or maybe in our new our new recollect worsted when that comes out um, so I'll put the three of them together. So again, horse belly, noppy, and then many moons right here. You can kind of see the difference there. So, yeah. We get that question a lot, what the difference is. Um, and again, noppy more of a yellow tan undertone. Horse Belly has more of a pink undertone. And then Many Moons is really pretty, just straightforward cream. Um, you, can get, you can get a tiny bit of undertone sometimes of yellow or a little bit of tan, but for the most part, it's just, it's like vanilla ice cream. It's like the moon. Um, okay, so where are we on time? we're fine 50 minutes um I've got a phone call in about a half an hour 45 minutes so um we should be fine I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about if you're coming to visit Montana and specifically coming to Great Falls um Yellowstone unfortunately we've had some really really horrible flooding I'm sure it's national news um the roads on a lot of the entrances are completely wiped out. So if you're planning on coming to Yellowstone this summer and you need other things, um, Glacier is still open, but I know you have to get reservations at Glacier to go in over the, um, over, not looking glass, um, going to the Sun Road. But there's a lot more that Glacier has to offer than going over to the Sun. I mean, it's iconic, it's beautiful, but there are some other places that you can get into a little bit easier. Um, and if you do go to Glacier, um, go early. I think I've said that before, but go early, early in the morning. Um, we have a blog post on our blog, on our website, and it has um, different things to do in Great Falls specifically. Um, and then we have these little postcards here that are places, oh, places to dine. I'm like, that's the same. Um, places to explore. And all of these things are also on the blog. I just repurposed the information and put it on also these um, postcards. If you place an order and you're like coming to visit and you want one of these postcards, just make a note and we can send you all three of them. Um, and then this one's places to dine. So Great Falls is central Montana. It's in between like if you're going to go from Bozeman to Glacier, um, 
you know, you're gonna go through Great Falls. And there's a lot to do around here. It's central Montana, so you're not going to get like what, you know, Whitefish or Missoula or Bozeman are gonna offer you, which is a lot of tourism, um, really expensive beautiful, lovely places, but, um, over the years, and that's, you know, I grew up in Whitefish, so I, I just, it's, honestly, it's a little disheartening for me, um, because it is just a completely different place when I grew up in the 90s there. I mean, I had such a quintessential childhood, um, you know, in a small ski town in the 90s, and it's it's kind of like Aspen. Again, beautiful, amazing places, but um, the true Montana experience is on the east side of the mountains. Um, you know, you're gonna get a lot more open skies, but you are going to have to really adventure out to like, if you're wanting to explore and hike and do those things. Um, there's really a lot to do in central Montana. Again, you're just driving a little bit farther and finding those things. So, um, a great places to go on the Rocky Mountain front. Like I said, Shoto, Augusta area, lots of hiking, lots of beautiful camping. Um, you can go east of here towards, it's called Kings Hill. Um, that's where there's a little ski resort up there, Showdown. Um, but there's lots to do up there. And then you can go down into White Sulphur Springs. That's a beautiful area. Um, you can go north of here to the Missouri River Breaks. Uh, just really, really amazing, amazing place. I sometimes I'm hesitant to like share it because it is so untouched. Um, but I'll do it on here. I mean, I don't know how many people are watching this, maybe a thousand, so. Um, and out of that thousand, I'm not sure how many of you guys are adventurers out in the wilderness. So uh, yeah, it's just, it's very, very lovely um, place. The Missouri River breaks. I'm excited I'm going there in July. It's like our one trip this summer that we're doing. So going there with friends, I can't wait. And lots of, um, you know, if you have fishermen or you're a fisherwoman, man, um, if you fish, the Missouri River near Great Falls is one of the best places to fish. Lots of guides, lots of places that will take you out to fish. And that's really lovely. There's also, if you're wanting like, you know, there's some great places to stay in town. There's some VRBO, lots of VRBOs in town. I shouldn't say lots, there are some VRBOs in town. One of them is really nice if you're coming here just to like visit the shop with girlfriends or stopping through for the night. Um, it's downtown. If you look on VRBO or, or whatever the other one is, I can't never, I always just use um, Verbo. Um, I can't remember the other website, but on either one of those. And it's downtown Great Falls and it's above a, brewer, a brewery. So that's a great place to stay. And um, there's some other, you know, I know of other VRBOs in town. Um, Hotel Arvon, which I do talk about in the blog, is a historic little hotel downtown. Really cute. I love it. Um, my two things I don't love about it is one, they have a lot of indigenous art made by non-indigenous people in there, which is annoying to me. Um, Cause I just think it's so easy to get some indigenous art and put it up, right? Like it's not hard to do good representation. Um, and there's also not windows in their rooms, but beyond that, it is a really, really cute little boutique hotel. And then the Celtic Cowboys downstairs, and they have lots of beers on tap and food and stuff like that. Um, there are some bigger, you know, hotels, the Stay Bridge and stuff like that. And then, if you're wanting though, like more of a vacation and more of like a true Montana experience, check out the ranches at Belt Creek. Um, I've been out there for brunches before and they're really, really good and beautiful area. They seem like they have their, their shit together and they seem like they're a great place to stay. I'm looking into doing a retreat there. So that's exciting. Um, I'm not really sure what that looks like or when that would be, but I think it would be something fun for us to do. Maybe doing a couple out there. And it will be nice because it's close to the shop so we can come and go shopping and maybe even do a class here or a class out there or something like that. So 
and you can also do like horse riding. I mean, they have all of the Montana things to do. And as far as like Montana ranches and stuff that goes, I feel like it's more affordable than some of like, there's some real, real luxe ranches out there um, where you're paying like $5,000 a night for it. It's, it's not like that. Um, so just some ideas for you guys. And you can, again, check out the blog. Feel free to email us if you guys have questions too about, um, you know, coming to visit, where to stay, where to eat. All of my recommendations are going to be on the blog. Um, but we do have some newer restaurants and bars and stuff in town. So there is that. Um, yeah, again, just let me know if you guys have questions about it. I'm happy to answer those. Okay, we better move along. Um, are you guys reading the sentence? In my first episode, I talked about that book. It's by um, Louise Erdrich. And I am, gosh, I think this morning I was reading a little bit and I'm like 80% the way through. I love it so much. I want to go to Minnesota. I want to go to Birch Bark book so bad now. I'm like planning this whole Minnesota. I love Minneapolis. Um, I think it's one of the most beautiful, cleanest, just like great representation. Talking about representation, they do an amazing job there. Um, I love, I love Minneapolis. And so I want to take a trip there and go, I've never explored Minnesota. And I just think that a lot of the culture there is just like really rich and deep and uh, all different types of culture too, right? Like indigenous culture, but then you also get like this kind of Scandinavian maybe culture. I don't know if Scandinavian's the right word. Um, you know, and everyone there is so nice. So yeah, it's, it's on my mind after reading the sentence. I'm almost done. I'm very excited. And the haunting of the bookstore is just so, it's so funny, it's so cool. There's been a lot of things in that book too that have brought up some really great points. And I think especially for motherhood too, um, there's one point kind of early on in the book and she has a stepdaughter-ish. Um, and she says something to her that really pisses her off and she's like, and it, she just had asked her a question, she, you know, has this, baby daddy who seems pretty questionable and she just like asked her about the baby daddy like what is he doing like is he gonna help is he gonna you know it was like one question and she got so upset and of course you know she's like a young mom and probably in her early 20s or something like that but throughout it they talk about how like that was so wrong of her to ask that question and as a mom of young teenagers I'm like what like of course she's gonna ask that question this dude is like not like stepping up to the plate he's just MIA and I just some of the themes in it have been really thought-provoking so let me know what you guys think if you've read it and you remember that part like I feel like it was a totally reasonable thing to ask but then throughout the book they're kind of like her friends are like no you can't ask that like you push too far I'm like I would have I would have pushed a lot farther than that, but I don't know. Now it's got me thinking. Um, yeah, so that's been good. The Indigenous Collective. I have the yarn. Oh, right over there. <laughs> I'm like, it's hiding. It's not hiding. Mm, now it's hiding. Um, and the blog post will be up tomorrow, and it's going to ship tomorrow, which today is Thursday, June 16th. So the 17th. So I'm so excited to show you guys that. Jeez, road rage on Central Avenue. Um, yeah, I'm excited to show you guys that and um, just be patient with the Indigenous Collective. It really is like, you know, some like sock squad it's like we have the colors picked out we're inspired by something it's easier for us to like get it done the indigenous collective is more what's the word it's more i can't even think of what the word would be heart heartfelt it's more I don't know what the word is. We're, we're putting more of our emotional labor into it. Emotional labor might be in it. And so sometimes that like takes a while, you know, like 
I, I like to take my time with that type of stuff. So really our goal is to get it out by the 16th, you know, on the 16th of the month, but it might be, it might be the 20th. It might be the 12th. Um, we'll just kind of see. So if you can hold off on sending this email, like where's it at? Where's that? Where's it at? It's going to get to you. I promise I will not let you down. Um, it just, again, might just take a minute. So um, we're doing our steak along. I know I talked about it in my last episode of like ruminating of like, okay, what are we gonna do? Um, so we're gonna do the steak along and I'm going to announce all of the details on June 30th. Basically what the idea is, is that, um, and I've never steaked before, Stara has never steaked before. So this is really like us all doing it together. We're gonna knit some baby sweaters and steak so we really have a good idea of what we're doing. Um, and then we'll put out some videos on like how we did it um, or give you referrals to other videos. Like I know Very Pink Knits has a crochet um, uh, reinforcement that she does and I think that's what we're gonna do. So I'll just like refer you to that video and then we'll do videos of us steaking it or doing other things like that. So there will be help along the way, but it is also like independent as well. Um, if you're here in the shop, we'll do a, we'll probably do like a kickoff party and then we'll do like where everybody can bring their stuff and they can steak like with us here in the shop and we'll have our sewing machines and all of that stuff. So um, that will be fun to do that in person, but you can also join along if you're not in person as well. And you can do any sweater you want. We'll have a whole list of like recommendations that again, all of that's gonna be available on the 30th. There's gonna be prizes. We're gonna go, I think, almost all the way into October with this. Um, we'll put out our steaking videos in September and then in October, we'll do the drawing. So you're gonna have like three and a half months to finish it, which is nice because if you have other things on the needles, you'll still be able to like cast on and, you know, kind of move along with us. Um, I hate knit alongs that are too quick. I can't even finish a knit along that's like six months. So let's just be real. Um, prizes, any sweater you want. What else? I was gonna say something else about it. Oh, we're gonna release um, Reminisce, which is Recollect, but it's not a gray base. And so it's just a white yarn that we've dyed on. And so we can do some of our really fun, bright colors like Hacer and Come and Get Your Love and some of those ones. So those will all release with the Steak Along information on June 30th. Um, I'm not going to do a podcast next week. So it might all be released before I see you on here again, but sign up for our newsletter. That's where you can find all the information about all of that. And then we're also not this Friday, but next Friday here at the shop going to start Friday happy hour. It's going to be from three to five. So you can come in, we'll have champagne and cause we have so much champagne left from our mimosa challenge and um, just sit and knit and end your week, hopefully a little bit early. So, okay, we gotta do the giveaway. And I think, I think you guys can just come, right? Is this weird? I don't know. Okay, first of all, if I, for some reason, all of a sudden cut out, um, I will like post pictures of the giveaway somehow and do all of that stuff. I'm okay, I'm hopefully gonna be able to like cut this in. Um, together because I took, started taking you guys up here and realized that I had the camera flipped around the other way and that just doesn't work. So um, this is the reason I really wanted to show you guys. This is Sarah from Strong Out Nets and she has given us these two beautiful bags that she made and We'll give both of these away. She is um, Sarah L. Barca on Instagram. She's done some, um, she's done some patterns for us before. And then on Etsy, it's strungoutknits.etsy.com. And they have these really, really cute fabric in them. I love this one. It has like moons and moss and it's really pretty. So, and then leather on the bottom. Just nice 
nice little knitting bags. So we're going to give away both of these. And then how about we do any base in any, um, in either horse belly, not be, or, um, horse belly, not be, or, uh, many moons. I couldn't remember for a second. All right. I think my time is up. I hope I can edit this in and uh, you guys have a great week. I'll see you on Instagram. I'll see you on our newsletter and I'll see you back here sooner rather than later. Okay. Bye-bye.